just not a dream. Gears 5 is finally here and boy oh boy it's a belter. So stop your grinning and drop your linen as we suit up, crouch down, Terminated. and throw some shapes on the dance floor as the stage is set for the complete analysis across all formats. Said. Starting with those pesky pixel counts and all versions run the same temporal AA that softens the image but retains coherency of pixel colour between frames. Now backing this up and a key addition is Unreal Engine 4's reconstructed buffer that merges the previous frames data with the current one to improve quality and build up a higher resolution than one single frame limit. Now on Xbox One S this consistently targets 1920 by 1080 and the X targets 3840 by 2160 as does the PC which helps all I and gives us a variety of counts. Now the final piece in this pixel puzzle is a dynamic scaler which ranges from 1280 by 720 on the base Xbox One S as saw in the alpha test I covered last month, hitting 1920 by 1080 as a maximum but it rarely hits this natively with the impeccable real time cutscenes often seeing somewhere around 900p. Now the recon is superb and we can really convince you of a higher resolution than it actually is. Now the X also rarely hits 3840 by 2160 natively, in fact in gameplay I don't think it ever does, using it dynamic scaling to leap from 1920 by 1080 and then up to a full 4K. Regular counts of 2240 by 1260 in heavy action can crop up, with the cinematics achieving higher levels around the 1800p or just under. And native 4K can occur at these times as well due to the half refresh rate that they run on across all consoles. The PC can unlock these but you need a beefy rig or low settings to benefit. Now from Xbox One S to PC, the game, detail, stability and results are among the best. And the TAA is doing wonders alongside complementing art and materials. The base console version for me is a revolution, as it's one of the best images I have enjoyed on it. And what a swan song, and a beautiful one it really is. Moving from pixels to performance, we see an equally big split. Base targets 30 in single player, with X pushing onwards for 60 in single player. The results are good, but not great. As I covered in the multiplayer last month, all those are 60 FPS on both the Xbox One S, the X, the PC. It's really designed around those, and the sacrifices made, which I've covered in detail before, to achieve those targets. But in terms of single player, and in terms of actual performance, the X is highest by far but it's not the closest to the target that it aims for. It actually is the S that hovers closer to those targets. 33 milliseconds is the limit, and during the majority of tested sections, it keeps those numbers well. Mild top section tearing with a soft V-Sync flip, allowing extra few milliseconds if needed on that frame. But these are again very rare, with mostly a full next refresh of 16 milliseconds occurring, or tearing appearing around those frame time dips. Giving us a worst case of 49.9 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds, which is both very consistent and important for a game's enjoyment. Side by side, the X is much better looking and only targets 30 in the cutscenes, which it can sometimes have mild pacing issues crop up, which are only occasional with other sections being an even cadence of 33 millisecond frames. Gameplay though is an on another level, and that 16 millisecond frame time can be a tall ask at times. Mild V-Sync tearing again from a soft V-Sync crops up alongside 33 millisecond spikes, meaning it may dip below its desired threshold. It does keep the next cycle as close as possible to 16 milliseconds, and that makes all the difference.
split of refresh rate is obvious as you play, which is backed up by the input times, which unsurprisingly are fastest on the PC with the best hardware and input latency there. But it all depends on your screen, which I've covered multiple times. If you don't know how to set your screen up, then please check my video out, which covers that in detail from probably four years ago now. Um, but aside that though, the X is obviously the faster of the two, largely helped by its improved frame rate running at 16, not 33 milliseconds, and that comes in with times you can see on screen. What is apparent is the cost to this single player visual quality, or the interaction, the physics elements that are in the game, and all those elements in the single player, such as the post processing elements, which are vastly increased over the multiplayer, has an impact on those times. This is why we see the Xbox One S comes in with a much better performing multiplayer at 60 FPS. That's actually faster than the Xbox One X in single player by around 30%, but it's 73% faster on the Xbox One X than the Xbox One S in single player and that largely come down to that split in frame rate which is half the time but again around 79 milliseconds is a big gap that you must lose somewhere in your post processing and rendering pipeline and that means that the, these are elements we've seen on many single player games such as Rise of the Tomb Raider, Sekiro and indeed Red Dead Redemption which was probably one of the worst and this isn't quite as bad as Red Dead 2 but it's still not that far away from a title that isn't the best performing in 30 FPS but it does still feel very smooth and fluid and Gears was never a fast responsive title anyway and third person shooters suffer much more than first person ones so you can't really expect those levels just yet or well, not until next gen rolls around. These are all the elements you'd expect of a third person shooter though and that frame rate gap is as good in input times as it is in refresh times on screen. So the X is the preferred option to play on consoles if you have a choice irrespective of all the visual benefits that it also offers on top of that. Now the last element to touch on is loading but really it's a bit hit and miss and I'm not really going to show you the examples because I tested a few times on the same console and they wildly differ based on various elements. I do believe the online co-op option built into the game is causing those issues so going offline does give you more consistent loading because it's probably trying to sync you up with friends that are online in the same title. So loading on this title from loading into new games or even loading from other sections between the games isn't the best. It can take take upwards of a minute at some point on its worst, maybe even longer if you get a really bad session. And multiplayer is slightly better because you're forced into online anyway, the longest time there was waiting to get into a lobby. I must admit I still enjoy the online section of this and I'm sure I'll be playing it for many months to come. But this is all about the single player, if you're interested in the multiplayer you can go and check out my previous video where I covered that in depth on the alpha test. <laughs> So the final comparison is the one that many of you probably are most interested in. How does the X compare against that big almighty PC version? And have Microsoft really stepped up their game in PC releases? Or are the consoles once again punching above their weight? Well this is a UWP release so from the very ground up this was built with PC in mind. That means it's designed to scale across multiple pieces of hardware. We can already see that from the Xbox One S to the X. Even though they look very similar on face value, in the cutscene specifically there are enhancements. The bokeh depth of field is much better, the alpha effects are better, the specular and bloom is better, and in the game itself there are a few effects that are toned down, certainly the particle effects which are removed, the particle spawn rate, which is in the PC option, is cut back, and some of the alpha effects are cut back also, both in resolution and quantity. They are very minimal, but all those little things add up to one or two milliseconds here and there, and that's all you need to hit those targets it rates and that means it scales even higher in the PC going up to 144 frames per second as standard in the main menu and I'm sure you can just turn VSync off and go as high as you want if you wanted to but you'd need the rig that probably doesn't exist to run this at ultra 4k here on my RTX 2070 and my FX, FX, I mean Ryzen 2700 plus, the FX 8350 is not really going to deliver the goods on this game, that's for sure. It really is a beautiful looking title that pushes the PC version even higher than the base consoles. And this largely stems from insane options. Yes, level of detail in the title you can see popping here on the trees just on the Xbox One, the level of detail in the game is arguably lowest, I wouldn't say it's lower than the lowest setting, i say it's different than the lowest setting. There are points in the title where you can get pop-in 
on the PC on the low settings which you don't get on the Xbox One but then other parts in the same areas do as you can see example of briefly on screen but even on the ultra settings on the PC you still get popping things like the particle spawn options when it spawns in fireflies and dust mites in the air and the light particles all of those are still pretty close and popping very close to view but visually the biggest improvements the title delivers obviously resolution you can go right up to 4k this particular machine it is perfectly suited to 3200 by 1800 at 60 fps on insane settings and it's pretty much unlocked 60 at that point i don't really get any problems at all with the rtx 2070. the actual menu setting does enhance quite a lot in the game with a few options having specific insane settings that you can go in and i'll touch on the menu settings in a moment but the comparison between the X and the PC version at full chat really comes down to better performance, better visual quality based on the resolution, and a refinement to things like shadow map texture quality if you download the texture pack. I'll touch on that in a moment as well. And then additional effects such as the particle spawn rate, the tessellation is much better, the cone path tracing, uh, which is almost like parallax occlusion mapping, and that's something that's quite new. It works well, it gives depth to certain objects. You saw it earlier with the X Xbox One S, it's better on the PC because it has a higher setting, and again, it's just enhancing and refining those options. Now, moving into the cinematics, one of the biggest boosts is you can unlock those 30 FPS cap on the consoles and move it to PC at 60. Here, though, on my RTX 2070 with the latest NVIDIA driver, it does stutter quite often. Now, it's far from constant, and it regularly happens when you're cutting from one shot to the next, when you're loading huge amounts of new geometry, assets, materials, rigging, all those things put strain on the CPU, the memory, and again, running this at half the frame rate, or at least you know, half the refresh rate, that does put more of a strain on the bandwidth itself. Now remember, the consoles do have a unified pool of RAM, and therefore they don't suffer from this anywhere near as much. So before everyone rushes up and says this is a bad port, which I don't believe it is a port at all, it's not. It's more about the fact that it's, it's designed and dedicated to run at 30 FPS. And in fact, if this didn't have a PC option, I wasn't designed around PC, I'm pretty sure these wouldn't not only be in the option for an unlocked frame rate mode, but actually they would most likely be video files like they were on Gears of War 4. Remember, every single cinematic in this game bar the intro sequence is real time rendered in engine on every machine that's running it, and therefore you get a good test of just how good the engine is and how well the team are pushing that engine, and the cinematics are the best. And just as we covered with the Xbox One S to the X with the enhancements on those visual qualities such as bokeh depth of field, lighting and geometry, again the same enhancements boost it on the PC. Bokeh depth of field is even better, bloom is even better, motion blur can be changed and also geometry is enhanced across all objects giving trees and fauna a much fuller look in certain cutscenes which can actually change the design of the game. Now one other addition to the PC version is you can download around a 1 gigabyte texture pack which enhances the game itself on PC. Again, so long as you have a decent graphics card that runs around 4 or 6 gigabyte, I think it will be. Uh, the 2070 here has enough, so that's fine. Essentially, this sits somewhere between on the Xbox One X, the standard and the texture pack. As you can see, example of here zoomed in, you can see the details on her jacket, her buttons, the zip, and her clothing. You can See the details are much better and enhanced and the shape is better on the x but once you go to the texture pack they've been enhanced again you can see the tessellation on a necklace as well which is missing on the xbox one x it's just the standard version there so these are some of the enhancements you get but the texture pack here is better than the x but the x is better than the standard pc version so as so long as you have the ram then download that free one gig texture pack then you get a slight boost to those texture details the actual PC version itself scales incredibly well, moving right down to that low setting, which is almost a heart back to the original Gears of War on the 360, where everything looks very flat and bland and quite old really when you look at that you realize just how much all these additional details in titles nowadays such as the post processing effects the motion blur the textures the materials the pbr based shading the ao all of those things add up to give you a much realistic and more rounded look in titles once you take all those things away even if you're fundamentally running the same geometry riggings and all that animation system it just doesn't convince you anywhere near as much you can check out at the end of the video where i just give you an example of how low it can actually go
final piece in the puzzle between the consoles and PC and even between the consoles themselves is screen space reflections. Now these are enhanced on the Xbox One X over the S. You can see this in the gameplay there of a high resolution and have a shorter cutoff in the frustrum but also they appear more prevalent and of a higher quality in the cutscenes on the X than they do on the S. You can see an example of the beginning sequence here with the reflection in the glass of Marcus which is not present on the Xbox One S. Now, to be fair, this isn't a screen space reflection per se. This is actually rendered to texture. This is a render port from a camera on the other backside of Marcus's face, is then rendered to the texture as an output and gives you that transparent texture effect on the screen, that reflection in the glass that's actually transparent from the opaque background. So those elements are additional in the X. You see this in lots of sequences where you get loads of screen space elements, all that noise and background occlusion issues that you get with screen space reflections because they're heavily used. And in addition to this, they use a similar technique but using screen space reflections by flipping the character back to give you those kinds of reflections in game in distorted objects and elements. Again though, moving to PC, these are enhanced much, much more. Pushing that reflection out on all specular surfaces, increasing the specular highlights, the reflection of light, the reflection of objects, and this carries across all elements of the title. And this gives many areas a far more metallic look to them than they are on the X, with some areas quite paired back with the amount of reflections going on. It works better on the brass and the metallic areas. It doesn't work quite as well in some of the reflections in the mirrors and therefore that balance between the two I can understand what they're going for probably spurred on by all this ray tracing talk in the last year or so but really it works well enough but it still has those elements of screen space reflections even if they do a better job of culling it when it fades in and out of the frustrum from the top and bottom of the camera by actually fading the reflection out but sometimes this actually comes out as looking like the puddle that it's reflecting as you can see here just completely disappears from the screen itself rather than actually reducing the reflection and leaving the puddle itself there. Overall, it's a better looking title on the PC. It's refined, enhanced, and it has options way above what the Xbox One X can push. But really, it isn't a game-changing update to the title. It's just a very refined one. The biggest improvements come from performance, resolution, and those cutscene cinematics. Everything else is hit and miss where you see it, where you don't see it. Volumetric lighting, which is used across the title, is again better quality, high resolution with a much smaller grid. But again, the game is a perfect balance of how modern, AAA titles are made. A lot of this stuff is tricks, treats, efforts to make everything look and work very well. Hand placed lighting, hand placed shadows, all of those things are put in there. So they mix and match the techniques there. You'll get things like voxel based grid fog or volumetric lighting. Then you'll get screen spaced crepuscular rays there. Even on the ultra settings on PC, you can see the shadow culling fades out as it moves away from the light source on the camera. You can see the shadow disappears. And then they use things like billboard lighting. You can see here from the torch lights in the stage area, they're just a standard billboard flipping and rotating around that looks like a volumetric beam from a distance. But once you get up close, you can see the weaknesses and the tricks behind the camera. Again, though, this is very standard. I could pull out every single AAA title that does the same thing here. So this is not something new. What is great about Gears of War 5 is it's a beautiful, artistic-driven title. It does lack all of the, the grimy, gritty horror feel that the original Gears of War titles had, but that kind of went by the wayside in Gears of War 3 when they moved over to the light mass system and everything changed to much brighter palette, richer colour schemes, reds, greens, blues, all of those things and that brown filter was completely removed. Here they've just simply amplified that and worked on that so you get lots of contrasting dark areas with gorgeous lighting, shadows, volumetric lights beaming through and then you get lots of high specular, lovely diffuse surfaces and lots of view distances and panning off into the distance with a very bright undertone and those darker areas contrast that a little more. And then they've used the techniques in the title very well. You've got adaptive tessellation working there along with shadow maps which works on the snow. It's not as good as some of the other solutions we've seen but these combination of all these artistic traits all work well. What is very good in the game is the singular light sources when you go into darker areas where you get your character, the robot, shines the light behind your head. You get everything casting dynamic lights and shadows and that bright centrifugal area light that comes off that object and casts lights across the scene does look very good across all versions. Even the S looks great on this version. So they've underpinned the title by making it look fundamentally the same on everything and it's a very impressive game overall. Possibly one of the best looking Unreal Engine 4 titles I've seen. It includes elements such as subsurface scattering on his ear and hair there on a strong light source and then the shadow casting and the different levels of diffuse and specular highlights from shadows and lights. All of that adds to that atmosphere and adds the PBR based material shading in this which is one of the highlights of the title itself. 
and certainly the best Gears of War title I've seen. It's not a million miles away from Gears of War 4. That move to real-time cinematics really makes a leap, and that's where the game generally impresses the most. They look impeccable. But animation, uh, action itself, interaction with the world, all those elements haven't drastically changed very much from the previous title. This is still a careful balance between the cinematic side and the delivery of the gameplay itself, channeling you through the story overall. And again, some of these sacrifices come from cutting back the you know, CPU cycles and GPU cycles on animation frames and rigging. You can see it with physics and destruction. You can see here as we fight one of the bosses, the actual tentacles that wrap around the machine itself are actually moving at half the refresh rate of the actual game itself at 60. So these cutbacks, some of you may notice, some of you not, but these are standard. Like I say, there's nothing new here. This comes all the time across many titles. Visually, it's a beautiful looking game, very strong and artistically driven, but again, very tailored specifically to what the artists want to deliver. And this is what single player titles are all about. It's about making sure the artistic delivery and all the set pieces all come off and deliver exactly what the people and developers intended. And Gears of War does a very good job of doing that. And if you're interested in just how low it can go, then you can look at the PC version here compared to the Xbox One running the cutscenes and then cutting down everything to the lowest possible settings, we get fully Xbox 360 levels of visual quality. And tell me that's not an horrific sight to see. Why not? All right, come on. So what's your issue with Jack anyway? Besides spending half my life hiding from Cogbots? No issue. So that's it. Gears of War 5 across every single version, including potato mode, if you're running it on a calculator. Gears of War 5 is a great game. Sorry, Gears 5. Gears of War 5. I'm so old school, you see, I'm even getting the wrong titles. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the analysis of the full game on all versions. If you did, and you like what I do, then please like, subscribe, and share where appropriate. And even support me over on Patreon, because I earn no money at all from YouTube. And this is a part-time gig. I do this on the side. This isn't a full-time thing. I still have a real job where I go out and do things in the real world. Anyway, I hope you guys and girls enjoyed it. I'll see you very soon on that next one.